What's up, guys? Uh, <clears throat> absolutely was so sick this morning. And I, <clears throat> I think I found out because I never get sick. But I think it was because my humidifier was left on the entire night with no, like, set humidity. So it was just pumping out all the water that was in it. It was a full tank. It's like about a gallon of water. So pretty much all night, it was pumping a gallon of water in my room. So it literally felt like if you sprayed a a spray bottle everywhere in the room. It was, it was so grimy and gross. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I think my the entire time my lungs were taking in that air. <coughs> you know, I don't know how good that is for you, um, but uh, I, I woke up with a massive headache um, and like, had no energy to do anything. I couldn't leave, I didn't leave my room until like one in the afternoon. And I, I couldn't sleep, I literally couldn't sleep. Um, it's terrible, it was really, really terrible. Um, so today, uh, I have really, I'm still recovering from it. Uh, I'm still gonna go to the gym though. I'm probably gonna do a bunch of sauna and steam room and such, uh, just for some recovery. And I'll be doing a cold shower there. Um, you know, I expect myself to feel amazing after, but it'll definitely help with my recovery. Uh, as far as the gym goes, I, I mean, I'll see how I feel at the gym, but I'll probably just do some stretching. I haven't stretched in a while, so I'll probably do some active recovery stuff. Even though it's Friday, I feel way out of it. I'm, I'm pretty sleep deprived. Uh, like last night I got terrible sleep. I didn't even know it was a humidifier until I ha had to get up. Um, and I was walking around and it was like watery. It was like if you walked out and there was a bunch of dew in the, in the morning, um, that's kind of how it felt, felt kind of, everything just felt a little slippery. Um, so that is definitely not good uh, at all. So I, I actually haven't searched up like what what it does to your body uh, because I was definitely in at least, you know, 80% humidity for a couple of hours, really. Um, yeah. I don't know how good that is for you, but it was just going full blast all fucking night. So it's just, it probably destroyed my, my TV in my room. Um, but whatever. So, uh, that's that. Um, so I have we have tax season coming up. Uh, so last year for 2023, uh, I JV'd on a property in Atlanta uh, with. So I was I was the one who put up the capital uh, for the renovation costs and everything else like that, um, and paid for the cost seg. So. Uh, I think I put in about sixty thousand um, dollars, and I spent a long time actually looking for a nice sub two deal. I actually was looking for something closer to Houston, um, but it ended up being a lot farther out. I, I kind of wish it was in Houston, so you know, just like a place where I can come and, and sweep the floors. Uh, but oh, there's a nice Rolls Royce right here. Black wheels, white pretty nice maybe you guys can see that when we're passing by but like I said yesterday um, I really like uh, I would really like a matte black G wagon okay or like um, a nice and a cyber truck for sure like you can't go wrong with a cyber truck and then like a nice sports car like that that's gonna be my garage and then like maybe a vintage but you know that's that's farther along um, right now it's all about stacking, stacking, stacking. Um, Cause I wanna get to a point where I can like have a couple million in the bank after taxes. After taxes is, is something a lot of people don't talk about. After taxes is, is uh, could be half of what you say. So uh, after taxes is actually a big flex. So if you say I have a million after taxes in my bank account, that's pretty impressive. That means depending on the state you're in, you made at least a million and a half and up. You know, I, you you probably be paying more. Um, probably somewhere around 500, 
thousand depending on how your structure is but here's a mistake i made so as soon as you make over like i think 70 grand now this is depending on your state now for me i operate in the state of, of, of texas i did my wholesale deals in florida uh the thing with me is that i made this huge mistake last year i could have saved so much more money on taxes even though i'm saving a lot of money on my depreciation and my write-offs that i have for my business i could have saved so much more uh, probably gonna pay just a couple thousand for my taxes even though I made like a ton of money this year or last year This year is gonna be great. Here's my advice if you're making over $70,000 in your wholesale business, whatever business is that you should have an S Corp set up So it's like a holding company. You can literally name it your name. It's like if I named it uh, Andy wrong LLC So what what this holding company does from my understanding now? I, I'm so very new to this tax game. So I may say something wrong here but what happens is that S Corp, that LLC, um, well, is now considered kind of a management company. So own 100% of the LLC that you operate in uh, for, you know, where, where you tr transact uh, over $70,000. Because if it's not over $70,000, it's not worth that structure. Uh, but if you are making over $70,000 a year, uh, then it 100% makes sense to have that S Corp structure. So, and that's like, that's literally like seven or six, six grand a month. Uh, so that's nothing. You close one client or you do one wholesale deal, even one wholesale deal. Like that's easy, easy, easy money. Uh, but as soon as you make over 70,000, it makes sense to have an S Corp in place. So have an S Corp in place and make it own a hundred percent of that LLC that you operate in. And then I think what that does is it, is it, then turns it into a pass-through LLC, I think, I think. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not a CPA, but here's what my CPA should have done last year, uh, but didn't do. And now I have to pay like much more in taxes, literally 20% extra. So what happened is uh, what you can do is pretty much uh, not have to be uh, paying self-employment tax. So you have self-employment tax which is like 15% or 12%. And then on top of that, you have your state and federal tax, especially if you motherfuckers are in California, you guys are fucked. You guys are fucked. Uh, like you guys are, you, you might as well just work a job because I mean, you're, you're probably paying, you're deaf, you're playing easily over 50% to the government. So I, I don't know what's so special about California other than fucking in and out, but, um, and now we have in and out in Texas, so really no point in going to California. Um, just full of a bunch of homeless people. Um, but other than that, uh, S-Corp structure, uh, I always, always have business centers all the time when I'm going to like, uh, like especially NARA, like I go to this place called NARA Cafe, and I always invite my uh, partners and friends there. Um, not friends, but business friends there to to talk about business future collaborations um and stuff like that like one time invited the uh, i always offer to pay for dinner if it's a client meeting or a business partner uh or if it's like an employee dinner i'll bring my personal assistant out and we'll have a, a dinner at chamagaucha to discuss you know future planning um for the company and our goals and stuff so i i love having these meetings it's great that they're a write-off uh but a lot of times i i you know people are like you know why do you why do you pay for my dinners um and it's like one it's a write-off because um we are talking about business more than 50 percent of the conversation at the table and it grants a lot of goodwill like one time i was at this uh mastermind event and um there was about 40 some people there was a couple really important people um and, and I invited them all out and then they what they thought it was a part of it what they thought it was part of the event that was already hosted it was like the last day of the event and they thought it was like something like you know Jamil did uh, but actually I was like hey let's all go to Chama Gaucha you know I you know I didn't even know I was actually spending the money on this but everyone went all my business partners went uh, everyone in my network went 40 people there at Chama Gaucha now mind you Chama Gaucha is a nice Brazilian steakhouse and it's at least 70, per, 70 a person plus gradual tea for 540 people. No, 40 people. Bill came out pretty uh, nasty, but I was like, the amount of goodwill this will generate 
you know, a lot of them may have forget about now, but the good world I'll generate, it's like, no one will really want to talk shit behind my back. And if you do, you're fucked up. I know you're fucked up. Um, you're fucked in the head if you do. Because, uh, I mean, all, all I do is, is, is try to give as, mu- give as much shit as I can. Uh, I never really ask for anything in return. Um, and when I do ask, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I've tried many times to figure out on my own. And I'm like, hey, you know, I have so much goodwill that I gave to this person. Or this guy has so much goodwill for me that, uh, you know, probably has a, f- a favor I can uh, or. He has a, he's a favor I can, he, he can do for me. So, um, always give, always be a giver. The, the bill was like four grand, something like that. Um, one dinner, one dinner was four grand. Uh, but it was 40 people that I pretty much gave a thank you card for, um, all out. And it's just like those 40 people talk about with their friends in the business space. And then, then boom, 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 boom. It's like, there we go. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.